Today, we're going to see how do we add or subtract any rational expressions. Now, the main idea here is that if we're going to try and add or subtract rational expressions, they need to have the same denominator. And we factor, if possible, where we're trying to find that least common denominator. So the idea is for you to add, they need to have the same denominator. And sometimes we factor in order to find that least common denominator. So let's try some examples here. Now, looking at example one, they asked me to simplify. All right. So again, if you want to add any fractions or any rational expressions, then we need to know, do they have the same denominator? Look at the denominators. They have the same denominator, A, B. So now that they have the same denominator, then we are allowed to add the numerators. So let's add them up. We're going to have U minus B, which is the first, plus 6U minus 3B, all divided by the denominator they have in common. All right. So we got the top. What do we do now? We're going to see, can I add any like terms? I see that I have the U's here. So I can add the U's. So 1U plus 6U, that's 7U. Is there any other like term that I see on the numerator? Uh, you got a B. You got a B. Negative B minus 3B. That's negative 4B. All divided by 8B. And this is it. This is how you add and subtract rational expressions. Now this example was straightforward because it already had the same denominator. But now let's look at example two for now. Now in example two, the first thing they want to see is do they have the same denominator? So let's see. The fraction for the first denominator has 6m cubed times n. The second fraction has 6m cubed times n. So they have the same denominator. So we're allowed to either add or subtract. In this case, we're subtracting. So we can subtract the numerators. So we're going to have m minus 3n, which is the first numerator, minus the whole thing, minus m plus 3n, all divided by the denominator, 6m cubed n. So let's see, how can we rewrite this? We can distribute that negative. So we're going to have m minus 3n minus m minus 3n, all divided by the same denominator. 6m cubed n, and now we see, well, is there any like terms that I can combine on the numerator? Well, I see that I can combine this m and this m, but m minus m, they cancel out. How about the n's? Minus 3n, minus 3n, that's negative 6n, all divided by 6m cubed n, and now we see, can I simplify? Well, Oops, I think I raised an N here. So can I simplify this? Yes, you can. Look at on the top, everything's been multiplied. Denominator, everything is multiplied. So we can cancel some stuff out here. So I see this N cancels out with this N. This 6 cancels out with this 6. So what do we have? We have negative 1 on the numerator. M cubed on the denominator. Now, why do we have negative 1 in the numerator? It's because when you cancel something out, it becomes a 1. So what is left in the numerator is a, it is a 1. So negative 1. And in the denominator, this is a 1. This is a 1. So the m to the third is the only thing that is, that is left over. So now let's look at an example here where we don't have the same denominator. So you cannot just add them up at this moment because they don't have the same denominator. So we got to see, well, is there anything that I can factor it out? No, there's nothing you can factor it out because it's already in factor form. Okay, so what can we do now? What we have to do now is we got to see as to what is the least common denominator. What is the lowest expression that they both have in common? Most of the time, it's going to be those two expressions. So here, the least common denominator is going to be the multiplication of the two denominators in this case is x plus 7 
x minus a. So this is the least common denominator. That's the lowest expression that those two fractions have in common. So now you have to see that now we're going to make each fraction have that least common denominator. So here what we're missing is an x minus a. That's what is missing on the first fraction. So we're going to have x minus 8 on the top, x minus 8 on the bottom. So what is missing on the right side? The x minus x plus 7. On the top, x plus 7 on the bottom. Now, if this was a little bit confusing, one way to see it is that we're just basically going to multiply by the denominator of the opposite fraction. The denominator here was x minus 8, so that's why I multiplied x minus 8 on the top and bottom. The denominator here was x minus 7, so I gotta multiply the other fraction, or the other denominator, which is x plus 7, so x plus 7 plus x plus 7. All right, so now you'll see that if we multiply those, we're gonna have the same denominator. So let's multiply them. We're gonna have these three distributes. So now we're going to have x times 3, 3x, minus 8 times 3. Uh, let's see what you show. This is say, so that's minus 24 divided by x minus 8 and x plus 7. Okay, so I distribute the first. So this is what we have. Now let's distribute the second fraction. Let's distribute that 4. So 4 times x and 4 times 7. So we're going to have 4 times x, that's 4x. 4 times 7, so that's 17, so that's 28. Divided by x minus 8 and x plus 7. Now notice that we have here, notice the den denominators now. Now they have the same denominator. So what is it that we are allowed to do? We can add the numerators now. So once we have into this form, we can add the numerators. So let me just rewrite it. And everything divided by that least common denominator. Okay, now we have it into this form. So what can we do now? Let's see if there's any like terms that we can combine. Look at this x. I have two x's here. So 3x plus 4x. That's 7x. Now let's look at the numbers. Negative 24 plus 28. That gets me um, plus 4. Divided by the least common denominator. x minus 8. And x plus 7. Now you ask, well, is there anything that I can do to simplify this fraction? No, there's not. So this is where we are and this is your final answer now the idea here again is to make sure they have the same denominator and that's why we multiply x minus 8 on the left and x plus 7 on the right now they have the same denominator i can add the numerators combine combine like terms and then you're pretty much done now let's look at another example here this is what we have now do they have the same denominators? No, nope, they don't have the same denominators. So I need to make them have the same denominators. So what can I do? I can multiply the left. I can multiply the left by the denominator on the right. So 3 minus 2x on top, 3 minus 2x on the bottom. I can multiply the right with the denominator on the left. 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3. Okay, so now we have this. So what can we do now? Well, we got to multiply now. Okay, let's take care of the first numerator. So 2x times 3. That's going to give me, what's that? 6x. 2x times negative 2x. That's the um, negative 4x squared. Denominator, I'm going to put them together, 3 minus 2x, 2x minus 3. All right, so I took care of the first fraction. Now I need to take care 
of the second fraction. So 3 times 2x, that is 6x. 3 times negative 3, that gets me negative 9. Divided by this whole fraction. 3 minus 2x, 2x minus 3. Oops, seems like, um, let me just put them together there. It's just not look right. So 3 minus 2x, 2x minus 3. Notice that they have the same denominator. Okay, so that's pretty, that's okay. So now they have the same denominator. I'm allowed to add the numerators. So let's add them up. So let me just rewrite it. See, x minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 9. Everything divided by 3 minus 2x, 2x minus 3. Well, let's see. Is there anything that I can um, add on the numerator? I see that the only like terms that I can add are those six x's. The rest, I cannot add them up. So let me just rewrite it. Negative 4x. Just rewrote it. Boom. There's nothing to combine it. So let's add those six x's. What do we have? Plus 12x. Um, minus 9. Divided by 3 minus 2x. 2x minus 3. Can I simplify the top? Um, yes, you can. But at this point, we're just practicing the idea of adding. So if you really want to simplify the top, you will have to factor by grouping. You will have to expand the middle in four terms and then factor by grouping. But as of right now, we're just concentrating on the idea of how do we add not so much the simplification factor. So as of this example, this can be your final answer. If you add these two expressions, 2x divided by 2x minus 3 plus 3 divided by 3 minus 2x, you will have this expression. Remember, all you have to do here is just make sure they have the same denominator. Once that they have the same denominator, you can just add the numerators that we have here. And then what you have left, you're just going to try to add any like terms. So this is what we have now here. Last example here. Okay. So now this example is not that straightforward. Um, why? Because um, notice on the left side, if, if I use the same strategy as the top, which is just multiply the denominators of the left, multiply to the right, and the denominator on the right, multiply to the left, it's going to be a big mess here. It's going to be a big mess because we're going to have to multiply y squared plus 5y plus 6 over y squared plus 5y plus 6. And this multiplication is going to be a big mess. So let's be smart about it. Um, let's see. Can I factor? Can I factor the left side? Can I factor the denominator? Well, let's see. y squared plus 5y plus 6. Is there a way for me to factor this out? Well, let's see. Three terms. Leading coefficient is 1, exponent 2. So I can use the x method. Number on top, 6. Number on the bottom, 5. Two numbers that if I multiply, it gives me 3, it gives me 6. And if I add them up, it gives me 5. So I'll be 3 and 2. 3 times 2, that's 6. 3 plus 2, that's 5. Okay, so that means that I can rewrite the denominator as 5 divided by Oops, it fits the purpose of what we're doing here. 5 divided by, and instead of writing y squared plus 5y plus 6, I can add x plus 3, x plus 2, plus the denominator, you cannot factor it out. Okay, so we factor it out, and that's cool. But now, what is the least common denominator? The least common denominator is, you see that they have y, both of the denominators have y squared, so that's definitely the least common denominator. So the least common denominator is going to be y plus 2, and then you're going to be putting the one that is left, x plus 3. Um, I'm sorry, this is, that's not an x. 
I always do that. It's not an X. That's a Y. Uh, these are not X's. These are Y's because we were talking about Y's here. So these are Y's. So, what plus D, what plus 2. Okay, so now we're good. Um, so the least common denominator is Y plus 2 times Y plus 3. So I want every single denominator to have that. So notice that the left side, the left fraction, already has it. So on the right side, instead of multiplying by y squared plus 5y plus 6, I am just I can just multiply y plus 3 over y plus 3. Because notice that if I do that, then both denominators are going to have the same expression. So let's see, what do we have now? Let's do that multiplication. So the left side, we're not the, we're not multiplying by anything, so let's just rewrite it. Five over y plus three, y plus two. Top. Okay. So let's multiply that. Two times y. That gets me two y. Two times three. It gets me 6. And now the denominator is just going to be them too. So y plus 2 times y plus 3. Okay. You got to remember that your main objective was for them to have the same denominator. Do they have the same denominator? Yes, they do. y plus 3 times y plus 2. That's the same as y plus 2 times y plus 3. So now that they have the same denominator, you can add the numerators now. So I'm going to have 5 plus 2y plus 6, everything divided by y plus 3, y plus 2. Can I combine anything on the numerator? I see that the only thing that I can combine are just the numbers. So 2y remains 5 plus 6, that's 11. And everything divided by y plus 3, y plus 2. And this is our final answer here. This problem was a little bit um, tricky because uh, if we use the same strategy as we were using before to just multiply the opposite denominators, um, that's going to get our problem a little bit harder than it should be. So the first thing I want to do is see if you can factor it out any expression. I see that I was able to factor out y squared plus 5y plus 6. Using the x method, these were my factors. Now you gotta remember that what you have to do here is you want to have both denominators to have the same the same expression. So I see that this the denominator on the right was missing a y plus three. So that's why I multiply y plus three top and bottom, perform the multiplication, then I have this. Now that they have the same denominators, I can add the numerators, combine any like terms and you will obtain your final answer. Now, here's your entrance ticket. Simplify the following. Two simple examples. Make sure to look at the previous examples in the videos. They're pretty similar. 